part seven of healing attachment wounds. And now we're going to jump into what generally forms an anxious attachment style. I think the single most important factor to consider for children that have anxious attachments is that the caregiver is anxious themselves. When the caregiver is anxious, they're going to naturally spill their overwhelm onto the child. And this one's a little tricky because most parents have anxiety about their caregiving abilities, much less have anxiety about everything in life because that's just how we operate nowadays. But having anxiety alone is not the sole factor for an anxious attachment. A very close second factor is the consistency of the parent. Kids need consistency. So if they have a caregiver where one minute they're in this happy-go-lucky mood and the parent is giving them all the love and attention and then the next minute in the bat of an eyelash, the child knows nothing about what's going on and the parent is all of a sudden in this really negative space where they're lashing out and rejecting the child, this inconsistency will cause a child to feel anxious because they don't know which version of the parent they're gonna get at any breaking moment. A third very important factor to consider is a lack of boundaries. Parents that often form anxious attachments in their children do not have structured boundaries, teaching the child that the child has their own space that the parent cannot cross into and that the child cannot cross into the parent's space. There gets to be a firm understanding of what each person will allow and tolerate for themselves so that they know how to conduct themselves in other relationships as they grow into adults. There's physical boundaries such as my body, your body, or my environment, your environment, but there's also emotional boundaries. When a parent does not exercise emotional and physical boundaries, it can lead to enmeshment, which is when the parent and child are entangled and they don't have their own separate identities.